Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on with our Mitsubishi Starion wide body design. Now, if you just picked up on this video and you haven't seen the previous 11 videos, then it's important to note that we started off with a scanner that Einscan sent me to play around with. So the first couple of videos are about scanning the car, processing the mesh, aligning it, and bringing it into Fusion. The past eight videos have all been on the design aspect, and there are a couple of key points that it's important that we keep in mind with designs like this. Whenever I'm doing this kind of work for myself or for a client, there are a couple of different phases that the design goes through. And I think this is also true when you look at production vehicle design. Whenever you have a new car or an update to a car or vehicle or product, whatever it is, then you're looking at a couple of key design stages. And most of the time it starts with hand drawings or sketches. We didn't do that with this case. We just kind of started to explore the shape. We have that initial phase, which is sort of the shape exploration phase. And that's where we're really trying to figure out what this thing is going to look like. Now we did a couple of variations on that. We designed or created the original fender shape. Then we created a first version of the fender and ultimately moved on to this one. And then there are going to be some of those design challenges that we hit whenever we're talking about carrying details like hard edges over in the design. Now, these are things that we oftentimes spend a lot of time on trying to figure out and sort out. And those are uh, key areas that are critical design elements that are sort of going to make or break your design. So those are things that we need to spend the time on. And then the last aspect of this, which we haven't gotten to yet, is where we put in all of the detail work. And we're really close to that stage. We're not quite there yet, but we are really close to that stage. And it's important if you're doing this on your own that you do understand and realize that this is not a quick process. There's not really a shortcut to this. If you were doing this in a class A surfacing program, you'd likely be designing a lot of curves and surfaces. You might potentially be doing this with sub D like we are here but it's still not a quick process. Yes, you can get concept shapes and a pretty good result fairly quickly within a couple hours, but you really do need to spend a good bit of time getting all of the finer details right. And that's gonna be the big difference between just slapping it together and putting the time in. And I've said this in all the other videos, but I'll say it here as well. Fusion is not a car or automotive design software. We do have these tools like forms or these sub D design tools. We do have surfacing tools and solid tools, and we're kind of using them past what they're intended for. So keep that in mind that we are going to run into hurdles in different areas where this would likely be easier. The surface quality would be better in a piece of software that was designed specifically for this. It's not what we have at our disposal here, but I do think it's important, and I've gotten this comment a couple of times, that we do sort of set our expectations. We're using Fusion mainly because it's free for hobbyists. Now, I am working on a commercial version, but uh, I do think it's important that people that are exploring this at home and doing it on their own have access to the software. And when you go to something like uh, Alias, which is Autodesk's automotive design package, when you go to something like that, even if you have, let's say, the free home learning edition, that kind of limits you on what you can do with the end results. And that's four to $10,000 a year for that software. So it's a big jump, a big difference when we go from something like Fusion to a program that is dedicated to that type of work. So without that out of the way, let's go ahead and let's refine what we have here and see if we can get a little bit closer to our end result. Now, if you have been following along, carry on with your design. If not, you can always go to the description of the video and I'll put exactly what you see here on the screen in a link there that you can open in Fusion. So at the end of the last video, we took a look at this and there was one area here, which of course stems from the star point. There's one area here that definitely needs to be addressed. There are a few other areas that I do wanna make sure that we work on. Uh, so as we look at this, we can see in this view, it looks like it's underneath the actual mesh. If we zoom in, you can see that it changes a little bit, but we, we've got some low and some high spots here. Now, ultimately, this is going to be 3D printed. I said in earlier videos, I wasn't sure what the end goal was going to be, if it was a functional 3D print or if it was just going to be used to build uh, sort of a fire glass mold off of it. I don't know yet. Um, I'm not 100% sure that this is the direction I want to go with this car. So it, I'm still kind of exploring that as well. 
So with that in mind, we do need to make sure that we do attempt to fix or address some of these issues. We're a little bit high right here in the front still and a little bit low in these other areas. You can see here that we're a little bit low. Now for a large 3D print, something that's gonna be probably two millimeters thick, does it really matter? Probably not. I mean, it's going to flex enough that it would probably be fine, but those are things that we do want to make sure that we address and get it as close as possible. Now, whenever we're working on a form, when we're back in the design workspace, if we have the surface here, I always like to turn it off before I edit the form, so that way I don't have that ghosted body inside of my design. Uh, a couple of things that we do want to make sure that we address, uh, those are really going to come down to a couple of different key areas. We need to make sure that where we hit the lower portion of the fender, just behind the bumper, that we are relatively close there. Now, there are some things that we probably are going to have to do to make that happen, but we want to make sure that we're relatively close there. We also want to make sure that the shape of the fender where it hits the car matches as closely as possible. So there are some potential surface issues that we kind of see in this corner here, some things that I want to address and fix. Now, I'm a big sort of advocate for working in box display. So Alt and one on the keyboard, we're gonna go back into box display and we're gonna make some adjustments here. So first off, I wanna take this edge or these vertices and I wanna pull those out and make sure that I can uh, sort of get them forward. Now, when we take a look at our selection priorities and our selection filters, make sure that we do have select through turned on. Sometimes we can toggle on and off the mesh and just make sure that we are selecting these vertices. Now, sometimes you can see that we're having an issue where it's not actually selecting that vertex. There are a couple of reasons for that. Sometimes it might be because of your selection filter it's automatically prioritizing faces and then edges. So for example, if we box select and get an entire face in, it's gonna grab the face and those edge loops, but it's not grabbing those vertices. If we switch the selection filter to vertices, then it will be able to grab those. But there is one important thing that you should be very careful with here. When we are in the vertex selection mode, you will notice there is an extra vertice that's close to these edges. And that's because we actually have control over the tangency direction. Now you won't really see that unless you're in smooth display. Uh, you can see here that we can change the tangency direction with that vertex selection mode. So be very careful if you are using that. For our purposes, I want to make sure that first off that I, I note that the location of that vertex in box display and smooth display is very different. Uh, so the fact that that's very different likely means that I want to carry some of these edges forward a bit more and try to drive that shape a little bit more. So that's what I'm going to do first before I make any changes. I'm going to go to insert point and I'm just going to take this one forward and hit enter. And then when I go to smooth display, it pulls that down a little bit. Again, this area is going to be cut out, so I'm not extremely worried about it but we do wanna make sure that we're not introducing any bad surface geometry there. So that potentially means that we might want to use insert point and carry this one forward a bit more as well. Even if it means putting a T point there, this might help drive that shape. And again, we just need to be careful of, of the geometry that we're getting in this area. Now this gives me an edge that almost exactly matches where that problem is. So I'm gonna take this and just pull it forward a little bit and just try to get it a little bit closer to that final shape. Now, this is where we get into big trouble by grabbing this edge in the smooth display. I'm gonna do Control Z and undo. And the reason for that is because when we look in box display, you can see how close these two edges are, and we really should be moving both of those together as opposed to one individually. Now, it can definitely cause us some problems downstream, because the whole way that we're controlling these tight transitions and edges with forms is by controlling the distance between those two edges. So making sure that those are always consistent is a big key to making sure that this works out. So up here, this edge, I wanna pull up a little bit and just make some adjustments. Uh, this one here looks like it might be a little bit high. I'm just gonna pull it down. Now, while we may not have the exact original car geometry. The scan data is telling us everything that we need to know about the shape. And working with the shape means that just making some minor adjustments and playing around with the location of these edges, just it helps us get to that final shape just a little bit better. 
It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we are dealing with a, what's going to be a relatively thin 3D print. It's going to conform to the shape. It'll probably get trimmed and adjusted as we go, but we do want to get it as close as possible. We, we have the tools right now. Why not spend a little bit of time making sure that it's as good as we can get it? The next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that as we roll around these corners that these transitions are relatively consistent. So I'm going to go to a right-hand view. This is going to put me in an orthographic view because I have perspective with ortho faces. And I want to straighten out this transition a little bit while making sure that the distance between each of these is still the same. I want to maintain some sort of parallelism between those edges. Now, at this point, if you've been following along, you know that when you work in forms, you have to get relatively comfortable with moving these views around and playing with things. And um, it's, it's probably a little bit hard to watch just because of how much and how often you have to move things. But that's kind of the workflow. And I don't use a 3D mouse anymore because it's a little harder. I've, I've, uh, from what I understand, it's a little bit harder for people to watch the model moving around with a 3D mouse. Uh, so I always use the default navigation, just holding down shift and the middle mouse button to rotate things around and double clicking the mouse wheel to center it. So now that we have that corner um, sort of taken care of, I am going to come back and address this, but I'm going to do that after we trim away some of the fender so I can actually see what's going on there. But we do want to make sure that we take care of whatever was going on in this surface back here. So I'm going to do Alt and 3. And we can see there's is almost like a dent in the fender right there. There's a little bit of a dent. And that dent is potentially there because of that T-point. It's possible that it's there because of that. There are a couple things that we can try to do. I'm going to hit OK on this. First thing that I want to do is I want to rotate around to a view where I can actually see that, make sure that I, I have good visibility on what's going on in that corner. So it might be hard to see on the screen, but there's a little bit of a shadow that carries up over here from that star point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to repair body and I'm going to see if I can convert that T point to a star point and if that'll fix it. Now it appears to fix it, but there's something we should really be looking at in this view here. If we look at these edges of that face that are now air quotes fixed that you can't see, this edge is no longer relatively straight. It's got this weird sort of jog or wobble in the middle. That wasn't there when it was a T point, it was relatively straight, but when we convert it to a star point, it does produce that problem. There are some other issues that come up with having that be a star point. You'll notice back here, there's something weird that's going on with that corner. And also the transition in this fender, it, it's not really as smooth as it was before when this was a T point. So that to me tells me that making that a star point is not my solution. Another thing that we can try to do is we can try to use make uniform, which is going to take all of the edges in the smooth display and get them a little bit closer to the box display. This doesn't always work. You can see here it wasn't able to do a make uniform on this, probably because they're relatively close already. But uh, those are just tools, things that we want to try to see if we can get it to work out. If that still doesn't work out, then what I'm going to do is go back to box display. And I need to determine whether or not we need three edges here to control that shape. Now we do on the front side, we've got three edges there and we've got that T point there. But on the back side, we may or may not actually need it. One other way that we can sort of address this before we get too far out of this portion of our design is we can try to insert an edge. Remember when we do insert edge here, this edge is going to be flat, meaning that when it gets inserted in box display, there is no change in angle from this face to this face. At this point, that's generally bad, but I'm gonna leave it until I connect these vertices together. So we're gonna to go to modify, insert point, and what I'm looking to do here is get rid of or sort of take out that T point and allow me to connect these edges back together but I want to do it in a way where I'm further away up here above the arch and I'm closer together where I want to control that edge. Now, before I make any adjustments or move anything, I'm going to take a look at this in smooth display. And it looks like we were able to get rid of that, uh, that sort of 
dent that we were seeing in the software. It's, uh, it's not very easy to see in this view. Sometimes hiding the edges, control four, that'll help us. But you can see that it did appear to clean it up, which is good. And it didn't really affect those hard edges that we have on the front of the fender. So I'm okay with that. Let's go ahead and control six and bring back our edges. One thing that is potentially concerning to me as I look at this is the shadowing that happens across that corner. What I wanna do is go to inspect and zebra analysis. I'm gonna put these on horizontal. I'm gonna increase the repeats. And I really wanna take a look at what happens when I rotate this around. And what I want to see is a relatively smooth transition of the zebra stripes into that corner and out of that corner. I don't wanna see any major jumps in the shape. So we rotate this around, maybe view it from the front view. Again, this is gonna be orthographic. We want to make sure that this is relatively smooth. There is a slight wobble that happens at that edge there, and there's a slight wobble that happens here. And this is where we need to kind of make a judgment call. Is the result that we're going to get from 3D printing this, is that going to be affected by any little change or variation we see in the surface here? Now, I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say no. We're not gonna have the quality or the resolution on a desktop FDM printer, even though it's a relatively large one, we're not gonna have the resolution to really notice that as a problem. Because of the way these 3D prints and the layers are going to be built, we're going to have some variations that are gonna to have to be sanded and smoothed out anyways. So I don't think that that little bit of a wobble at those edges is going to be a make or break deal on this. There, there could potentially be some areas where that's problematic, but overall with the zebra stripes, what I wanna see is the larger surface areas don't have sort of this thing going on. And you can see there is a wobble in here in the middle. Now that is definitely an issue that I want to take a look at and address. I wanna make sure that that's not gonna be a problem. And up front here, this is something that we might wanna look at. It could potentially be an issue uh, along this edge here. But again, this is getting cut out, or most of this is getting cut out. So I'm not too concerned with some of that geometry, but this area here right in the middle of the fender, this is something that I would wanna look at because there's no reason that we should see a jump in continuity here. The stuff at the edges, again, resolution of the printer, it's gonna to have to be hand sanded anyways. Everything else actually looks really good. I'm, I'm really happy with the rest of it, but this sort of center section here, I wanna take a closer look at to make sure there isn't a problem that we need to address. So we're gonna look at this in uh, box display mode. So Alt and one on the keyboard and just take a look at what's going on with these shapes. Now we have four sides here. These are probably the largest ones on the design. And that's probably part of the reason why we're having issues. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce a couple of T points, which again, I generally hate to do, but I'm gonna start a couple of faces away. I'm gonna to go to the midpoint of each of these and I'm gonna bring it to right there and I'm gonna say, okay. Then I'm gonna take these two in the middle. Again, these are the largest faces on the design or they appear to be. And this one, I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit. Now, the reason I wanted to add these extra lines here is because it's important that these T points this line here still stays relatively straight. There's no reason that I want a T-point to end at an edge that isn't straight because the curvature is going to get pretty wild. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna go back to smooth display. I'm gonna go back to my inspect and zebra stripes. Again, make them horizontal and just take a look and see what we did in that area, if we helped it or if we hurt it. Now, you can see that we kind of changed things. We smoothed it out, but now there's definitely a seam or a ridge that's going on in here. I'm gonna leave the zebra stripes on. Those are gonna be in my analysis folder. And you can see that we've got a curvature map analysis in here. But if I do undo and go back before I added those edges, and let's go ahead and add the zebra analysis on here. Let's go ahead and turn that on. So now if I come back and I do insert point while this is on the zebra stripe, maybe we can get a better idea of what's going on here. So again, I'm going to the midpoint of each of these edges and I'm going far enough away that if I make a change, I don't affect that T point. 
And then I'm gonna take, let's see, just these two edges and I'm gonna pull them out. Now you'll notice it doesn't look bad from all the angles. There's only the side angle that really is kind of looking bad, but you can see as I pull this out, you can kind of see what's happening to those zebra stripes. They're starting to bunch up because ultimately what I'm doing is I'm driving the curvature in this area. If we look at it in box display, I'm driving the curvature in this area and now it has to go through this tight transition and bulge out and then bulge back in. And this is obviously problematic and it's really not helping our overall shape. So I'm gonna do Control Z, put it back and hit cancel and just take a look at this from the side and determine whether or not this is something that we really need to address or fix. So another way that we can look at this is to take a look at it with our edges off. Again, Control and four. And I'm gonna double click this edge and I wanna pay close attention to what happens to the shadowing. I'm gonna delete it and see if I notice any difference. I don't notice any difference there. So I don't think that this is an area that I really wanna spend much time on. The zebra stripes tell me that something's going on with the curvature there, but the view here that I see, I don't notice any problems. So to me, that's gonna be an okay solution. Again, we really have to consider the downstream workflow, the 3D printer, and how this is actually gonna be manufactured whether or not that's something that is going to have a downstream effect. I could spend hours and hours trying to perfect this, but at the end of the day, is it going to be worth it? So a couple of other areas that we want to address, we need to address how this thing is going to connect to the body. We are gonna be leaving the back of this open, which likely means there's going to be an extra piece to fill that in, some venting or ducting that happens there. Uh, for right now, I'm not too worried about that but I am worried about this edge meeting up with the fender. Now this is a little bit tricky on my car because in this car I have the optional mud flaps and those mud flaps are going to be in the way. They can't stay on the car. And when I scanned them, they were on the car. Uh, so this means I need to kind of artificially know where the fender is going to be going. And it's, I mean, it's a pretty straight shot from where it is. So it's not too hard to do. Uh, but you can see that there's a little bit of a lip here there is a small piece of trim that goes there. It's a black plastic trim that just kind of covers up this, the body seams. And then it rolls underneath the car and it's all black under there. Uh, so this tells me that I just need to try and line up with that surface right there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use modify and pull. And I'm gonna pull my vertices back to the surface. Uh, so you can see here, it's pulling it back to the surface. That is giving me a result where it's pulling it to the closest one because of where that is. And that's really not giving me a, a great result. Uh, if I wanted to, for some reason, keep the, uh, the flares in here, the little uh, mud flaps, I could work my way around that, but I don't think it really makes sense for, for doing a wide body. Uh, so let's cancel that. And let's go ahead and let's take a look at just manually manipulating this edge. Uh, manually manipulating it, not going to be as accurate, but in some cases, it's going to be exactly what we need. So I'm going to take that edge, modify, and this back one here, let's see, I'm going to pull it so that that back edge is kind of in line with where I want it. I want it to kind of fit right into that little crease there. And then I need to move my pivot point to that vertex. And then I can sort of scale it down to be in line. Now there are some, some potential issues that come with this because of all these other edges. But once I get that sort of section straight, then I can begin to pull down these other vertices. And I really hate that little menu. It's always in my way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this one. I'm gonna move my pivot point back here and then scale these down in the X direction. So it basically makes a straight line. Now, anytime you are considering doing something like an over fender for a wide body like this, you do have to be mindful of the fact that you're gonna be trimming away some of the original. Uh, like there, you can't stick a wider tire, potentially a bigger tire 
inside of a, a wheel arch and expect it to go up and into that fender. Now, unless you have almost no suspension travel, that might work. But in this case, I do know that some of this is going to get cut away. Now, because I haven't actually cut anything away yet, I don't have a good reference for where that's going to be. I don't even know what size tire uh, is, is going to end up on this car, probably an 18, maybe a 245 in the front. But um, until I have all of that information, I need to kind of make some best guesses. And this is actually one benefit to printing this in multiple sections, because when we do that, we can just go back and we can reprint a section or we can make adjustments and we don't have to reprint all the front. We don't potentially have to reprint the middle section. We can just deal with this sort of back section right here. So I am, I'm going to go ahead and just run with that, knowing that there are going to be potential errors, but we can see that this line right here sort of fits into that groove or that crease. And this does give me the ability to potentially remake that little trim piece that goes there. Now, currently it goes from the back of the front wheel arch all the way to the rear, but it could be potentially made in a couple sections because there are some screw holes at the bottom and it would allow me to build the bottom of this into that new trim piece and screw it on. There will ultimately have to be some sort of side skirt, which was on the wide body version of this car, but not on the narrow body. And that would take up this extra space as well, because the car does roll down and go under from there. But um, that would sort of fill in that area. All right, so the last thing that I want to address on here before we move on is this shape right here. We can see that it's coming in the car right here, and it's sort of uh, you know away from the fender here. So again, I want to address where that's fitting into the car. And for that, let's hide the mesh for a second and just take a look at it. And again, we're not worried about what's going on up here, but one thing that we need to consider is the distance between these edges. That is going to be something we really need to make sure that we maintain. So what I'm gonna do is with those edges selected, I'm gonna move my pivot point back here and I want to rotate that. So I'm gonna to try to view it a little bit from the top and begin rotating that out. Five degrees is too much, so maybe I'm gonna go one degree. And we can see that now this puts it a little bit closer to where I would expect that fender to be. And then I can take this bottom edge, probably just that vertex, and I can move that. I'm gonna to go to a bottom view, double click the mouse wheel, and sort of move that. And what I'm looking to do is just make some general adjustments. I'm gonna find where this vertex is. And again, if you've got multiple in the same area, make sure that you move them all together so you don't really mess up the curvature too bad. All right, so it's looking better. We've got a little bit of overlap there. And then I just wanna push these back. So I'm gonna take these vertices, move that out of my way. I'm gonna take these ones here, potentially that one there. And then I'm gonna select Let's see this one here and set that as my pivot point. And then I can sort of scale these back until they look like they're in kind of the right place. So I think that's okay. Could do a little bit more work here, pulling this edge out and away from the car. And then maybe pulling this one back. And again, make sure that if you've got a couple that are bunched together that you make sure you select them together Otherwise, you could get in, uh, get into trouble. All right, so that looks pretty good. Double check the box display that we didn't really mess up anything. Hide the mesh. And these corners are going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, we're probably going to have to come back when we try to thicken this thing. We're probably going to have to come back and do some work here. But uh, overall, I think that looks OK. This doesn't really need to be in that far. But for right now, I'm going to leave it. And I think that is pretty good. So let hit the, let's hit the magic button and hope that we didn't have a problem somewhere. So whenever you're working on a form, there are gonna be times when it's only displayed as a box display. And that generally means that you have a problem somewhere, either an error point, an error star point or a T point. Usually the repair bodies will find that stuff and it'll display them as red. Uh, so you, you have these end guns, T points, L points, star points. 
And if they're displayed in yellow, that just means they're part of the geometry and I can convert them from T points to star points and it, and it has an effect on the geometry. If they're red, however, it generally means that it's something that has to be fixed. It, it won't let it convert. So when we hit finish form, if we did our job, we should have a nice smooth fender. So control four to hide my edges. And we should, we should not see that little dent or divot there anymore. There is some sort of weird artifact that's happening right there that I don't really like. So you can see that the, the corner there looks relatively smooth, but it's really tight back there. So for that, I'm gonna go back into the form, bring my edges back, box display, and see if I can figure out what's going on here. Um, everything looks, looks to be fine here. I don't know why we would have that issue. Uh, in some cases, when you see stuff like that, it means that the, the edges weren't merged properly. But here, it actually looks fine. Uh, I'm not really sure why that's like that. But what I'm going to do to try to alleviate this is I'm going to just move these edges out a little bit to make sure that it's not too flat in that area. Let it reconvert and see if it smooths it out. Uh, it still has something going on near that edge. So let's try one more thing to see if we can sort of fix that. Uh, there is another option that we have. When we go to our utilities, we have this convert option. Now, when we hit finish form, when we have history capture on, that will automatically convert it with some default settings. But if we use the convert and force it manually, we can select the T-spine body, and we have this option to keep edges. And when we use keep edges, sometimes this allows us to bring in edges of our design that we might want downstream. So for example, if we wanna bring in these edges, we can say, okay, and it's gonna go through, it's gonna to try to convert it. And when it makes the surface patches, the final B rep that we get that we're gonna work with, then what it'll do is it'll try to maintain those edges. Now here you can see that it, it failed to convert. So I'm gonna return and I'm gonna try this again. It, had some sort of error there. So we're gonna to try to do it one more time. This time I'm going to just select one edge and see if we can get it to convert with that. And with this, if we rotate around, now that edge looks consistent to me. Um, it does look a little bit different up here in the front. It's just the shadowing is a little bit different. Like it almost has an extra flat spot. And what I mean by that is you can see here the lighting kind of stays fairly consistent. And then right here, it kind of fades away. These are the kinds of things that I you could sit here and I could just spend tons of time trying to fix. But the main thing is that I fixed it back here. And that's what I was worried about the front. I'm not too concerned with for right now, there's a lot of change in curvature in this area. And there's a bunch of stuff sort of pulling it in different directions. So that's an area where we're just going to have to potentially go back and make some changes. Even though we manually converted, we still can go back and we can make adjustments to the form. All we're doing is we're sort of hijacking the aspect of the conversion process that is automated and we're, we're forcing the issue and saying, hey, this is what we want. This is how we want to convert it. So now let's do a little bit of surface work on this before we finish this video. I know we're already 30, over 30 minutes in and I tried to keep them to 30 minutes, but they just, they, they are what they are. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide the surface and show the mesh. We're gonna start a new sketch on the side. And all I wanna do is trim back the, the form body. So we can see that there is sort of a shadow line here. And I'm gonna go a bit above that and a bit behind this one here and just come all the way down until I've exited the mesh. It's a little bit easier for me to see. And then I'm gonna do control and four to hide the basically the edge display. So again, this just helps me visually see things a little bit better. I'm gonna pull this back. And this is essentially what we're going to be using to trim away our over fender. So the over fender, while it does roll over the, uh, the top of the fender, it's going to have to be cut away from where the marker light is. Now, a couple things that we can do here, let's finish the sketch. Uh, but a couple things that we can do or think about with something like this is we can potentially cut more of the surface away and then we can come back and 
build rebuild it with surfaces. Uh, so in this case, I just want to cut this away and just see what it looks like. So we're going to use this sketch as our trim tool. And then there's no additional prompt with this tool for whatever reason. I don't know why. But you just need to pick the area of the surface that you want to get rid of. So for us, it's this inside section. It highlights it red, which is not great because they have this as a red body. But uh, we'll say OK. We'll hide that sketch. And we'll just sort of take a look at what we have. So what I want to see here is that we are relatively close to the mesh body. I can do Control-6 to bring my edges back. That we're relatively close to the mesh body here, which it looks like we are. We do have pretty good fitment there. So we're matching the lines of the bumper. We're not bumping in quite as aggressive as the stock car does, but we do still maintain that line in the design. And that was the design intent. You can see we've got both of those lines there. So visually from the side, what we want to see is that we do have this line carrying on. You can see that it kind of gets a little out of parallel here. Again, this is something we need to determine if we want to spend a lot of time trying to drive or if we're happy with the results. We can go back and we can make tweaks even after these surface cuts have been done. But overall, we want to maintain that line visually, but we don't need it to sink all the way back into the car. Now up here, we want to make sure that we attach to the mesh in the front. We can kind of see there's a little corner of that where we're overlapping, so that's perfect. And then it begins to flare away. Again, mimicking the body lines of the stock car. This is actually a marker light, so that's something that we need to still have visibility of. But we can build this out with surfaces. Now, part of the reason we do this is because these kinds of transitions would be difficult for us to do with forms. It's not impossible, but the amount of time that we spent trying to drive these harder edges and these shapes, having to go back and do that and maintain that sort of level of accuracy with the form itself, that's just going to be something that's not very realistic. But we need to determine at this point, do we want to just have this go straight out you know, so for example, if we just took this and went straight back to the body, is that an okay design feature? Do we want to incorporate a small vent here where we potentially have air that goes back to, let's say, uh, the back of the caliper? That could potentially be, uh, you know, brought in there. Remember, the original fender is still going to be there. The ma majority of it will still be there. So we can use that body to help sort of build a duct out. At, and again, that's totally possible. That's something that we could do. And maybe later on, we can sort of discuss those options. But overall, uh, I think you can see here, this is the original fender, and then that's the wider version of it. So we've got a direct path or a direct channel. Since this is getting cut away, we could just feed a tube back to the back of the brake. Uh, now, there are better places to do it. Obviously, up here, the fog light and the turn signal or marker light, uh, there are some openings that we could put in the lower portion of the air dam on later cars on the wide bodies they actually did have openings down here the narrow body version just had it in the center for the radiator but um, so overall we could do a little bit more work there but for right now I think just knowing that we're close that we are you know in good alignment with the car here and good alignment with the car here I think that's a big win for us uh, there is one more area that we do need to trim and that's back here so from a top view I'm going to start a sketch on the top plane. I'm going to hide the surface because I don't really need to see it, but we want to cut away here. And again, I'm just going to use a line and I'm going to cut back a little bit and then just sort of come over. And then we want to apply a fillet to that. And, and again, if you need to, you can use control and four to hide the edges on the mesh to see it a little bit better. And then we'll bring back our surface and we'll use that as a trim tool. So once again, select that, a little area that you wanna get rid of, and then hide our sketch. So everything looks pretty good so far. There are a couple areas where we can see the mesh body underneath. It's not really a big deal because we do want good fitment. We could just, honestly in this, we could just take a strip of double-sided tape. A lot of OEMs use double-sided tape to stick their body panels or the trim pieces on. We could certainly do that and attach it there. We could do the same thing here, and it would probably hold this fender on perfectly uh, because we do have a little bit of alignment here. We could tape it there. These are also areas where we could use uh, you know, some screw attachments, but I think 
overall, that looks pretty good. One of the things that I like to do at the end of these is I like to go into the render workspace and just take a look at it as a render. Now you can see here, we do see the mesh coming through a little bit. Um, overall, that looks pretty good. Anytime we have these small amounts of overlap, we need to really consider a couple of things. We need to think about one, how accurate the scan is. And in this case, it's pretty accurate, but that's a area that is hard. It's shadowed, there's a crease right there. You can see that we are missing a little bit of data, but we need to determine if that is an area where we wanna spend a lot of time. Uh, another thing that we need to think about is this transition right here, I left pretty tight. Now, part of the reason I did is because I plan to keep the OEM air dam, but I plan to make a side piece or pieces here that will sort of take up that extra space. Uh, it's something I haven't really seen done before, maintaining the original air dam, and then potentially putting some sort of splitter underneath it to get it a little bit lower, but trying to keep that original sort of aesthetic of the car. It's really important to me in this design, and that's why I really worked hard to try to keep these creases. Now, I do think that I will go back and adjust these a little bit and potentially these as well. They look pretty good, but I think it could be better. It just kind of depends on you know, how particular you're gonna be with the design. But overall, I think that looks pretty good. There, I don't really like this right here, um, how that edge sort of feathers out. So I will probably go back and, and take a look. Renders are pretty good for highlighting that stuff. So right now it could be just a graphics thing. So doing an in-canvas render, which does some live ray tracing. Now that essentially is taking a look at each pixel in the design, and then it's calculating what the light is doing or the shadows are doing. And we can see that there's definitely something going on in that corner. Now with ray tracing, anytime you move a design, it's going to redo that ray tracing. What we want to see is these nice smooth transitions and the reflections and the shadowing, and it obviously changes there. So while that may have not seemed like a, a big issue initially, definitely something that I wanna go back and fix with a design like this. But we can step back, take a look at the overall shape and determine whether or not we're happy with this. I'm pretty happy with it so far. I think we've done a lot that's really difficult to do with forms, controlling these harder edges, matching the body lines and just getting the overall shape to look how you know, it's sort of evolved into. I think that's a, that's a pretty good step. In the next video, I don't, again, I don't know how many videos these are gonna be, but I did have a lot of requests that said, just please show the entire process. So in the next video, we are going to work on fixing that section of the, the crease on the fender and potentially do some surface work to fill in these gaps and get it to the point where it can be a solid and we can start you know, 3D printing sections of it. So I think that's what I'll aim for in the next video. And if you have any questions up to this point, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.